Hi everyone, I'm Michael Simmons. I'm with Algorithm. We're a company based in Munich, Germany, and our core focus is doing audio and music software. Professional audio and music software, but that's made for the masses. Professional music software that can be used by anyone and is approachable by anyone. And we actually have DJ available for the Mac, the iPad, and as of yesterday, we launched it on the iPhone. And the iPad version has been doing incredible. In fact, it was featured in Apple's iPad TV commercial. And rather than tell you about DJ, I'd like to give you a peek of DJ for iPad. And some of the buzzwords that he described that might not have been inspiring, our goal is to take something like a DJ application and bring it to everyone, but take it in the spirit that it was meant in. And the evolution of DJing started with very complex and heavy equipment, very expensive equipment that wasn't very easily accessible to everyone. And as the size and the price were prohibitive, we started with our Mac software and brought it down and took it to the iPad and made it even more appealing and approachable. And now it's accessible to anyone and we're truly changing the game and we see that in our sales and we see that with the market size that's growing. And we expect the game to change even more with our iPhone version that we launched yesterday. That's Algorithm, that's DJ, and I thank you very much for your time. Stay right here. All right, so I've got some questions for you. Were you impressed you at least? Um, I'm not sure I have some more questions. All right, Graphically, the video looks cool. All right, cool. Um, did you say you have Android support? Uh, right now we're supporting Mac, iPad, iPhone, and iPod Touch. What's your plan for Android? Our plan right now is to adjust with the market. We feel that right now for the accessibility and the type of audience that we're going for, which is the mass market, the Apple audience, and the technologies that we can leverage are the best in the business. Okay, so a lot of the features that you've listed there, um, there's a lot of DJ apps. Correct. And I've seen those features in a lot of them. Um, how, do you, how would you best explain how yours differentiates from all the other DJ apps out there. Because well, on a feature level, I, I didn't see any specific features that stood out as a core differentiator. That's exactly right. And the key is that we're supposed to have the professionalism, like I said, but bring it to the masses. So the key feature, the key differentiator of ours is the user interface, okay. how it's approachable. Most of the previous solutions, you know, they're hard to use, they're cumbersome, expensive, and so on. If you look at our interface, it looks like two turntables and a mixer and, a, and all the controls. It looks easy and approachable, and that's the key. It's all about the user experience and the user okay. details that sets us apart. Um, While still leveraging that powerful how much technology. Does it cost? So we have three versions. The Mac version is $49. The iPad version is $19.99. $49? For the Mac. That's for the masses? That is for the masses, and the sales are following. Okay. And the iPad version is $19.99, and the iPhone version is $9.99. Um, and can I add music easily from my iTunes library? Absolutely. In fact, that's one of the barriers that we remove, is you use your existing iTunes library. You don't have to rip, you don't have to encode, you don't have to bring a hard drive with you. Your iTunes library is what we use to play with your music. How long has it been in the market? We started in 2006, that's when DJ for Mac came out. We're up to version three now. We have our iPad and iPhone version. As I said, the iPhone version just launched yesterday. So we actually have three, if you will, distinct versions, but we've been around for about five years now. Okay, let's uh, Next. move down in here to the judges. So what do you guys think? Sure. How, how have you uh, assessed the market? How many amateur, you know, serious amateur and semi-pro DJs are out there? Well, it's very interesting. The DJ market, some people might think is niche. I mean, it's a big market, but some people might think it's niche. But everyone likes music and everyone wants to play with their music or be a DJ. And to answer your question, our iPad version came out and we were number one in top grossing and top sales. And as you can imagine, in the app store, that's huge. That's, that's the pinnacle. We, we were the number one selling app for all iPad. So I think if that's an indicator of the market and where we're reaching, that's probably a pretty good answer. It's pretty, it's pretty cool that you got featured in the, uh, in the iPad ad. How'd you, how did you make that happen? 
just by marketing it, talking to Apple about our mission and our product. Uh, when you work with Apple and you submit your app, there are partnership managers that you talk to and they just, they got the message that we were sending out, taking something that's in the past been complex and unapproachable and making it approachable. I mean, I guess uh, one of my questions is maybe not specific to this, but uh, on a bigger <laughs> scale is that what happens to the output? So it's some, like as a musician, you have these consumers that can take two songs and then do what with them, mix them together and then create a new, what becomes to the new, you know, like what happens to the output? Right, so with the output, there's, there's different, depending on the platform, it's a little different. On the Mac, because you have things like USB, you can actually use multiple channels, you can have as many channels as you want, there's different types of adapters and so on. With the iPad and iPhone, we use what's called a split adapter that allows you to do pre-queuing. What it does, it splits the left and right into two mono channels, and then it splits those two mono into two stereo, so you can actually pre-queue. And when you're DJing with you know, big speakers, stereo separation is not that important. Once the hardware ability on the iPad and iPhone is eventually open, which we believe it will be, you know, we'll support that. But to answer your question more directly, we support recording. So you can actually make recordings of your mixes. You can share them with your friends. Obviously, if it's copyrighted music, you have to be cognizant of that. But the point is, is you can make your own mixes, you can record them, and you can output them with perfection. When you say you support recording, there's re recording functionality in the app? There is a button, you hit it, it records, and, you, and then your mixes are actually managed by iTunes. Now hang on, uh, you skipped over something right there, and maybe this was the point of your question, which is that you said you support copyright, but you also allow people to use copyrighted music and make their own stuff and save it and share it with people. The music that you share, obviously you have to share it with someone that has the songs that you have. So okay. if you have family members, for example, that own the same CDs as you. So if you really are going to share a mix, again, you have to be cognizant of the copyright laws. So, but, I, so but, I can't take one of the mixes and just upload it to SoundCloud or something like that. This is probably entering territory that I'm not an expert in, but there are albums out there, for example, that use samples and they're distributed. Yeah. You hey have man, to check it's 2011, you know. No, I'm just, I'm Where's just Lawrence it is, it is, it, We need Lawrence Lessig here. This question comes up a lot about copywriting and, and sharing. Check the, check the laws. No, but my, question, my question is you don't need to have the source files to play it somewhere else. I'm sorry? You don't have to, to have the source files. If I, if I make a mix and I send it to Natalia, she doesn't have to have No, no, the, no. The recording becomes an IFF it becomes, recording. It becomes, you, you okay. actually creates, you know, and you can compress it into MP3 or whatever. It's, it's fully managed by iTunes. When Is it's there done. a freemium component? Uh, there, there's no trial? freemium component. The diff on the Mac, you can do a trial because, of course, on a Mac, we're allowed to do trial. On yeah. iPad and iPhone, you can't right now. We are discussing potentially having a free version that might have some limitations, but we really think for the price and what you get, it's, it's okay. pretty self-sufficient. Okay. Sean, you have a yeah, So how, what causes you to believe you can stay ahead of the market, right? We've seen this trend where solutions get simpler, easier to, easier to use, more powerful, and cheaper and more people use them over time. Sure. The challenge is, is typically the new technology comes from someone who's just around the corner that you can't see yet. So what causes you to believe you can stay ahead? We think we can stay ahead because our approach is different. There are technical advances in DJing software, but the user interfaces are not approachable. We kind of took it back to the roots and made it like real DJing. And you know, we're working on other products as well. And the key for us is to make an app that's approachable. And we think we'll stay ahead of the curve because it's familiar to people. The app is approachable. And we think that's the biggest barrier from existing apps and it's the feedback we're getting from our customers who are really, look at our app store reviews and you'll see about how really well this is catching on. Is there, is there anything else you can monetize on top of the, just the, the app price? So for monetization, we are looking to team up with bands and DJs, people who use our apps. We actually have some relationships with like the Prodigy and Big Boy and things like that where they're using our apps and they have you know, they love our apps. There's a lot of professional DJs who use our apps where we can't say who they are, but they write us and tell us they are. So in that vein, we're monetizing by just the growth of this product. Professional DJs who might use something like Tractor or, or Serato app, they use that to perform with, but they actually write us to tell us that they prefer our product on a tour bus or in their back room or whatever, where they just want to play around and get comfortable. They really love the feeling of our app for a personal experience. Tell me about the team. Who do you have? Like, what differentiates you guys? How do you think you can pull this off long term? We're all musicians. Our CEO is actually a professional DJ. We're all engineers. As I mentioned, the team's based in Munich, Germany. I'm based here in America. And the difference with us is our team all thinks about the same thing, which is the design detail. Every single one of us knows that if our product isn't familiar and fun and easy to approach, we're not going to have a great solution, and all of us are on that wavelength, and I think it shows in our products. But in terms of making partnerships and going out, like, do you guys have the industry experience to go make phone calls and get to the people that you need to get to? 
We are working with artist managers who are actually bringing in artists to us, and again, their reception from artists, and you can see some of the artists on our website are really well received. Have you done any A-B testing or research around price? For some reason, I, why, why, does, why do I think at five bucks you'd get more than a 10X uplift over 50? So uh, I've actually been, uh, I'm working with Algorithm, but I've actually been doing the App Store since it came out. And the thing is this, there's the quantity, which is numbers, and then there's the gross. And there's different lists. There's top paid and top grossing. Yeah. And what we feel is if a product, and we've seen this with other companies, if a product is a solid product and is differentiated by, let's say, a user interface, people will pay more. And that more makes up for okay. less sales and more support and more people you have to, you know, potentially deal with. What's, uh, what's, so what stage is the company at? Are you guys, like, uh, how big are you? Are profitable? Are you looking for funding? Like, what's... Yep, we're fully profitable now. We are a privately held company. Uh, we're not looking for funding at this point at our growth, especially when the iPad came out. When we did the Mac version, and once the iPhone had come out, before the iPad was announced, we knew we probably wanted to do some kind of portable version, but we just weren't really there yet. Once the iPad came out, we knew we had to do it. And the iPad version, as I mentioned, has been a runaway success. We weren't even prepared for the, you know, being number one on the App Store. And right now, we're enjoying the growth. We're enjoying the success. We're growing organically. We are, as I mentioned to you, we're going to work on other audio and music products, because that's our goal, to take audio and music products and make them better, make them more approachable. And right now, you know, we're doing really well in terms of our private funding. So we got about 30 seconds left. We got time for one more question. Who's going to come? I'm impressed. Thank you. <laughs> Natalia, you looked like you were going to say something. No, no. no. How do you? How or do you, you just look like you were going to. How I, do think you, uh, you do, I think you should, you should, you need to do Android. So we, are, we will look at other platforms. The real issue is this user interface. Yeah. It starts with the platform. So you can't really make a platform that's not necessarily as approachable, approachable. You can, but it's still not the same experience. And with that, we are out of time. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it.